University Area CDC offers support for thousands of Tampa residents through youth programs, adult education, and resource assistance. Its primary mission is the redevelopment and sustainability of the at-risk areas surrounding University of South Florida's Tampa campus. They're up next on Bayside. Good morning and welcome to Bayside. I'm your host, Shelly Sanders. We are talking all about the University Area Community Development Corporation and here to talk to us about it. I can't think of a better person than the Executive Director, Ms. Sarah Combs. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, well, so many great things go on in the Bay Area and it's not often that we get to really scratch the surface of half of them that we maybe hear about different projects and this is one of those that maybe you hear in passing or you hear the acronym and you go gosh okay well it sounds good I think but what is mm -hmm. it what's really going on um, when you scratch the surface there's a lot ha happening in that particular area so without further ado talk, talk to us about it sure sure I'm so excited to be able to talk to you about it and yeah. share with the viewers a little bit about what we're doing in, in the university area community yeah. Uh, the University Area CDC was created in 1998 as a means to really improve the University Area community, uh, really the area around USF, and uh, we do that through a plethora of different programs, um, safety and health and wellness, uh, education, affordable housing, youth programs, uh, we have a, a Get Moving Health and Wellness program, we also have a uh, different resources located in our 55,000 square foot center such as Head Start, our Prodigy program and so um, it's important for us to be able to know how do we really fulfill the need of all the different areas that that we need to to really improve that community and most importantly the residents in the community. Sure I mean I can't even imagine that task of trying to prioritize how yeah. do you go about doing that or is that something that you rely heavily heavily upon the community for feedback and and really trying to listen to the residents in that area. Yeah, absolutely. Well, about three years ago, we really changed um, our approach to how we were really working as a CDC. And we changed that from really looking inward to looking outward in a holistic approach to really community development. And it started with us, you know, going out into the community um, with, you know, jeans and t-shirts and tennis shoes and knocking on doors and speaking to the residents and sure. finding out you know, what, what is the services and programs um, that you need in order to be successful? What are those um, resources that you need access to in order to really help you be self-sustainable? And um, that was a community needs assessment that we did. Mm -hmm. From that, we gathered the data and came back to the table and really assessed where the greatest need was, you know, speaking directly from the residents. And from that, we created our strategic plan and it really started to implement, you know, what the community says that they want, which mm -hmm. is really exciting for us because we feel like we're connected with the residents and, sure. and really doing the services that they need. Well, I think that's wonderful that, I mean, really showing that you're passionate and committed to that area. I mean, you know, you hear oftentimes you hear like, okay, it's always the upper echelon or the directors mm -hmm. or the big table, the round table making decisions. And I mean, you're walking out, knocking on doors. So what, it, what bottom line, what'd you end up finding out? Well, we found out that um, the first thing was accessibility is difficult because there's not a lot of um, sidewalks or lighting. So making you know access to you know to the grocery store or walking your kids to to school sure. is really a challenge. So we we knew that. Um, we needed to focus on infrastructure in the community and, and safety as well. So um, that was one of the areas that we decided that we were going to really pursue and we're, we're doing so now. Um, the other big one was that families didn't feel like they had a safe place um, you know, to, to come together and be a family. There's no parks in the university area community. And so that was a big one for us um, because we think it's really important for, you know, when, you, when your kids get home from school or in the summer to have some place to go. Sure. And not only for the kids, but for the parents to be social and meet other residents, other, other neighbors. And that's how you born, uh, that's how you create those social ties and connections. Right. And so from that, we garnered that we needed a park in the community, in the heart of the community. 
And so we were so excited because we had seven acres in the heart of the community oh, wow. and we decided to turn that into a park. So that's one of our big projects that we're doing right now. And from resident engagement and input, they told us what they wanted on that park. So mm -hmm. we're building a um, one acre freshwater um, fish pond um, oh, so fun. residents can actually fish. Oh, nice. um, a 33 bed organic garden that actually is already there. Mm -hmm. um, a multi-purpose sports field uh, for youth and um, adults to be able to do sports, you know, leagues and whatnot. Uh, a walking trail so residents can feel healthy and well and make sure that they're um, having an opportunity to you know exercise and and whatnot a playground an outdoor fitness area for adults and then a teaching kitchen and um, kind of a community center sure. so it's a, a big project um, but we're on phase two of phase four and um, we're excited about that because this this park is really going to be the beacon of hope for the residents sure i love how it's sort of it falls in line with that, uh, like a pay it forward, mm -hmm. so to speak, for for lack of a better description. You've got the the garden there now. Is that a community effort that everyone kind of pitches in, and how does that work? Absolutely. So one of the reasons we started a garden, because of all things, people said, why, you know, why would you start a garden? And and our response to that was, you know, the health outcomes in this community are equal to those of El Salvador. Um, oh, wow. The nutritional, you know, uh, deficiencies in this community are, are really a struggle and a challenge and food access is also an issue. We're a, a food desert. Mm -hmm. So for us, we said we're going to do a community garden because we need to do po something positive in the heart of the community and then start to get residents to, to be engaged. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we did. And, you know, the first year it took us some time to get traction because residents um, weren't necessarily, didn't really necessarily think it was for them. So we harvested the vegetables and went door to door and gave them to the residents and talked to them about, you know, coming and getting engaged. Um, and so that was really key for us. But what we found was some of the residents weren't, you know, picking the really healthy foods that, you know, we buy at Whole Foods like dinosaur yeah. kale and um, spotted eggplant and things because they didn't know how to cook it. Sure. And our community is, is uh a very diverse community which is one of our greatest strengths we have people from all over um, and that's one of the things we really celebrate is the diversity of our community but we have to realize that um, they might not know how to cook these you know these vegetables and the fruits so we created the teaching kitchen to be oh, able to really wonderful. take that skill that you have and translate it into uh, into the kitchen and really try to promote the family to be able to do cooking together to learn how to do that so they're not reliant on you know fast food sure. and corner stores and whatnot. So we're really teaching them how to access, you know, Love for better it. health and wellness for the Everything family. just sort of integrating together. That's what it's about, community, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. ultimately. Yeah. All right, you're looking at the website right there. It's uacdc.org, that's the website. It's gonna give you all the information that Sarah and I are talking about today and then some. You can also log on to our website. Why don't you check it out while we get a break? Welcome back to Bayside. I'm your host, Shelley Sanders, talking with Sarah Combs, the Executive Director of UACDC. Now, so many things going on over there. We could probably have five or six shows <laughs> and still not talk about yeah. all the projects, all the, the programs that you have available. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the Prodigy program. Absolutely. Uh, Prodigy pro the Prodigy program is one of our flagship programs. It's been around for 17 years. Wow. Um, it's a model program that has really been proven through research to show an 89% non-recidivism rate. Um, so it's one of the best in the state. Uh, unfortunately, we um, got an 80% funding cut this year. Oh, wow. uh, our program, even with those results, even with those results, it was very um, devastating to the to specifically the, the youth in the community. Mm -hmm. um, but the program is a cultural arts program for at risk. So through uh, dance, um, cooking classes, uh, ceramics, drums. Um, keyboarding, you name it, music studio classes, these youth learn problem solving, anger management, communication skills, and really learn to um, combat those issues of everyday life um, because they have this great relationship with their instructor and this kind of model of support that wraps around them. And an outlet. To, Absolutely. You know, I Ab mean, Absolutely. I think that's an overlooked point when you're talking about your arts. Absolutely. Especially. And it gives them the self-esteem that maybe they hadn't had before and the opportunity to really open up and discuss, you know, 
know, issues or challenges that they're having and have a group that can support them. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, because we got a $3.6 million funding cut, um, we used to operate in six counties uh, across um, West, West Central Florida, uh, and now we're unfortunately having to close sites because of that drastic mm -hmm. funding cut. And so we're doing everything that we possibly can in terms of trying to figure out how to keep those programming locations in the community open. Uh, we, we're going to be closing some sites, but how do we keep you know those small locations open to serve youth? Because sure. uh, our fear is that where will these youth go? You know, where without Prodigy, where are they going to you know end up? And um, we want to make sure that we can try to leverage our resources as much as possible to serve as many youth. Sure. What, would, I mean, what can our viewers do in that aspect? Well, I think for us right now, we're really gearing up to, to go up to Tallahassee and, and um, you know, reach out to all of our legislators just to say how important this program is for our youth. You know, it's not just Hillsborough County. It's Pinellas and Pasco and Osceola and Orange. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's six counties that we're serving. And because, you know, this drastic cut, those counties' youth are going to be affected. Sure. And, um, you know, for us, it's, it's really about the youth and the families, um, you know, them knowing that they're not going to have a place for their child to go somewhere that they felt that they've built this circle of support, this, these, th this trust. Sure. And, you know, just for us, the idea that they're not going to have that is just devastating. And sure. where do they go? You know, some of these places, there's no other services. So this was the only option for, you know, these youth. And now that Prodigy won't be there, where are they going to go? They're going to sure. fall through the cracks. So we ask that, you know, if anyone has any um, relationships with local legislators, that they reach out to them and let them know how important this program is and to support it. Um, because we know that the value of this program and most importantly, the ROI that it brings, you know, the mm -hmm. cost per youth that, w that we serve is about 1400 and, you know, we probably s save the state about $40,000 if that youth was to go, you know, on the opposite end of the sure. spectrum. So we're advocating to support prevention uh, and not really, you know, not really try to waste the dollars in the back end when you can invest them in the front. Sure. Now, on a positive note, you do still have some of that programming available, yes. and you have a gala that's coming up, correct? Yes, To kind we of do. showcase and pat on the back, if you will, those individuals that have... Will you tell me about it? Absolutely. So we're, <laughs> you know, we've gotten a lot of calls from parents and from supporters to say, what are you guys doing about this? And unfortunately for us is we have to get through this year and look for next year. So we sure. are fighting hard to get fully, you know, full funding back from, um, you know, the legislator from Department of Juvenile Justice at 4.6. But until then, we figured a great way to gather and, and rally all of our supporters is to have a gala. It's um, going to be on November 3rd, uh, and it's called Art in the Park After Dark. And it's really going to be a magical night where we showcase the arts in our community. And not mm. only the arts, but um, our, our community and our youth and, and how they really play into you know, the arts community that the university area is really creating. So we're excited about that because it's a magical evening that you you can help support through sponsorship, through ticket sales, um, also through you know just being able to sure. be door openers for us and talk about the. As things a matter of fact, to. you're looking at home um, at the website on your screen, and this has got all the information about Art in the Park, including the hours, everything you need to know about it is right there on that website. And to remind you, that website is uacdc.org, uacdc.org. Of course, we'll have a link for you on our website as well, just in case you get lost, not a problem. <laughs> so what a wonderful way to sort of, you know, compliment and give that little pat on the back to, to these young artists. You know, I we mean, think it's a, a, a wonderful opportunity to really showcase them. And absolutely. for supporters who really don't know um, a lot about the program, this is a great opportunity for, for them to learn. And, now, and is we, it a free event? It is not a free event. It's okay. 70, $75 per person or 125 per couple. Sure. Um, but we also at the event really showcase who we are mm -hmm. as a CDC. Um, we showcase the different programs and services, and we really celebrate the residents um, of our community. So right. it's a great event to come to just learn more about who we are and what we do, and we throw one heck of a party. <laughs> so so walk me else, through that. Walk us through sure, that. Sure, we will real have. Um, it's going to be really exciting because arts is our theme this year yeah. because we're really celebrating Prodigy. But um, we're going to showcase arts in all different forms. So you know, how food is art. So you'll be um, mm. really having some amazing culinary experiences as well as um, watching live art happen. Um, we'll be showing some 
an art gallery that our students did specifically to showcase their talent. Um, you'll see art Can through clothing. Can you purchase clothing. any of this? You will be able to purchase ah, some of it. So okay. uh, another way to really support a youth that has sure. done that. Um, so there'll be a lot of opportunities. And another really cool opportunity is we're having it underneath our brand new pavilion that will be finished in one week. Oh my gosh. So it gives wow. us an opportunity to showcase that and our band shell that's located right next door. Well, there you go. All right, again, you're looking at that website, uacdc.org. What a fantastic way to, to support this cause. All right, check it out. We're gonna go to break. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to Bayside. I'm your host, Shelly Sanders. I've been talking with Sarah Combs all about the UACDC. Big things, Sarah, big things going on. And uh, we were talking during the break. We've actually been to the parks, yeah. be people here. I've been there. It is a beautiful property. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that you mentioned is, yeah, you'll see signs around the park on these properties. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about this housing. Well, for our community, it's always been a very transient community and home ownership is about 10%. So we have a lot of renters in the community. And for us, it's when you ask someone, where do you live? They say, I stay. So I stay off of 143rd Street. Mm -hmm. um, they don't say they live there because they're pa just passing through. So for us, we have to change that. We have to get people to invest in the community and want to live there. So we need to get urban pioneers who, you know, will say, we believe in this community and we want to call this community our home and, and, and buy a house. Um, so for us, that's our next step is affordable housing. We know that um, specifically in our community, housing is an issue, especially affordable housing. Um, it's happening everywhere in, in Tampa Bay, but in our community especially. So what we're doing is really trying to change the community and doing that from the inside out. So we're buying the properties around the park with the intent for affordable housing. And so we're excited because we've closed on um, about six properties now. Um, right next to the park, we've purchased four properties all together. And so we're excited about that because we're going to be building single family housing. Oh, nice. Which is really exciting because um, it's not just single family housing. We're doing it in an innovative and holistic approach to really showing residents how they can become homeowners and it, making it to where it's um, cheaper for them to own a home than it is to rent. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're doing that through a new innovative um, program that we're developing as we speak, and we hope to get that funded and start on our six houses um, in about six months. How exciting, and I can't imagine being the individual that's going to benefit from this. I mean, somebody who maybe possibly thinks, gosh, you know, that's not even a possibility. Absolutely. And to make it, make it where, yeah, it is a possibility. Absolutely, and what's so exciting about that is the individuals, the families um, that are in our programs, we have our STEPS program, we have our Get Moving program, we have our Health and Wellness program, we have, I mean, we have a plethora of different programs, workforce program, and th those are our entry points. So once we get a family or an individual in the program, we assess them and we see if they're really ready to be a, a homeowner or really ready to really stabilize themselves. And sure. we have a kind of a, a list in mind of, of residents that are already, already in our programs that we're going to offer this opportunity of housing too because we know they're ready for it um, and right now this is you're talking about the four properties that you have at the moment but you're going to go what block by block and, and what is what is the future thinking what is that for the foresight that you have for this area sure for us it's important that we um, make sure that we're in control of the destiny of this community there's a, a lot of exciting things happening um, around the community which is great um, but we want to make sure that the residents have a place you know to call home and that they don't get forced out by other factors that come in so for us to do that we have to own the land um, so that's critically important for us because uh, if we don't own the land, we can't um, predict what the future holds. Sure. Um, so for us, it's single family housing, it's multifamily housing, it's mixed use development. Um, so we know that we've earmarked certain properties that we've purchased with, um, you know, this one will be for multifamily, this one's going to be for single family and whatnot, um, because we know the need is great. And what better way to do that but to build off of the park and keep sure. building out and really um, so do it big. Park. The park sounds sort of like the heartbeat Absolutely. of the community Absolutely. and the fact that it starts there with sort of a, a community effort with between the garden, between the actual playgrounds, the gym, everything that's there um, really being the focal point and working its way out. So Absolutely. establishing that community. Absolutely. It's really going to be the catalyst for 
transformative chain, change. And you know what residents start to see is change is happening. It's no longer we're talking about what we're going to do. We're doing it. And we're not only doing it, we're engaging the residents as we do it. So we're asking them, what do you want to see? You mm -hmm. know, what do you want to see um, at this park? You know, what do you think is important for us to build? And then we're doing that. What's the feedback you're getting from the residents there? They're excited about it. You know, they uh, some of them almost think it's too good to be true. This park is for us. Sure. We don't have to Pinch. pay for it. You know, is it going to be locked? I mean, are, are we going to be able to access it? No, this park is for you. This is park is for the community, for the residents. We're not only going to build it, but we're going to program it. We're going to have opportunities for you and your families to be able to engage and meet other residents and, and form those community relationships. So where you now you know your neighbors, you know, and it, it creates a, an atmosphere where you where you want to pick up your trash in your community. Absolutely. You want to look out for one pride, another. A sense of pride. You know, a sense of pride that other other communities have. We want to bring that because our residents deserve it. Absolutely. I love that. Well, and it starts with permanence. Yep. You know, with your residency there. Mm -hmm. Love it. Big things are happening. You're looking at the website right there, uacdc.org. Of course, you're going to want to log on to this website. Get your tickets for Art in the Park. Log on while we go to break. As always, I want to thank you for joining us this week on Bayside, and thank you, Sarah, for being here and enlightening us as to all things that are going on in the area over there. It's just fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. And I got to tell you, I tell you, week after week, get out, get involved in your community. I can't think of a better way to do that than on November 3rd, enjoying this Art in the Park After Dark Gala. Get your tickets now. You're looking at the website, uacdc.org. That's how you're going to get your tickets. That's how you're going to learn everything to do with the UACDC. We'll see you next week. I'm Shelly Sanders. <laughs>